Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, today is October 31st, 2021. I'm going to share a dream that I had last night. This is a warning dream for a specific person named Ron. And um, I've probably had four to five different dreams about Ron, but uh, the last one was approximately a month ago, and I'm going to put that in the description box below. And this time I have been uh, led by the Lord to actually tag you, Ron, uh, so you're going to be able to uh, definitely uh, hear this and not be able to ignore it. Um, the Lord corrects those that he loves. Okay, so I will, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the dream and then I'm going to come back with the Bible scripture. Okay, the dream starts off that I see, I drew some pictures so you can see what I'm seeing. The dream starts off that I see a candle and the candle has a very, very long wick, very long wick, okay? Then I see the candle wick has failed. It went doop like this. So the candle wick was standing tall, was standing upright, very tall, but then it went just like this, shoot, and it also dipped into the wax. So it's in the wax over here where it comes out at, and then it drooped over, and it ended up in the wax over here. And I'm like, well, candle can't work like that. So I took scissors, and I cut in the middle. I cut in the middle. So now there's two candle wicks two, a double and in the dream I said to myself I just talked to Justin about this about the double portion so these two candle wicks are symbolic of the double portion that is coming okay now the scene changed and I am inside Ron's apartment uh, now, this is the way the Lord works uh, in the dreams. When he gives visions and dreams, it doesn't have to be the literal place. But anyway, I'm inside what I know to be Ron's apartment. Um, absolute catastrophe mess. It is a wreck. It is such a mess. And Ron is drunk. Now, this is all spiritual. This is spiritual drunkenness. This is not about physical anything about this is all about your spiritual condition how God sees you so um, he, uh, Ron is drunk and I'm like what's wrong with you and, and he says well I'm drunk again that's how he said it I'm drunk again and I thought to myself I wasn't like disappointed but I was like surprised like like can't you get it together like what is wrong with you and but I did say to Ron I said well you need to get right with God and I knew it was a very severe, um, I knew he was going to be in extreme trouble. If he didn't get right with God, he was going to be in extreme trouble. This was no light matter. This was no a little thing. This was a very serious situation. And he needed to get right with God and get right with God now, right now. There's no time for this nonsense. But he was drunk. He was kind of like staggering around in the apartment, uh, just couldn't even hold, just really did, wasn't even interested in a conversation I was trying to have with him about, because then what I did was this, I said, so with the candles, I had like, imagine like these little bread ties, these little wire bread ties with like the plastic coating on it. I had those in my hand and I said, listen, I had a dream a while, just a little while ago. And let me tell you about my dream. I saw a candle. And it had a very tall wick. And then I extended out the bread wrapper uh, really straight and tall. And I said the wick looked like this. You know, it was really straight and tall. So it looked like this. That's what I said. I said it was tall like this. I said, but then I took the bread wrapper and I bent it over. And I said, but then it did this. And I said, but I said, what I did at that point was I took the scissors and I cut it and there became two wicks. There became two candle wicks. And I said, 
um, that's, that's what my dream was. And, um, I knew it was about double portion of a judgment, not a double portion of the false spirit, but a double portion of judgment is coming. And so I'm explaining that to Ron. He doesn't want to hear it. So I start uh, cleaning up his house. His house is a wreck. I'm sweeping the floor, just stuff all over the floor, like dust and debris, like it's just flying around. The I feel like almost like I got to put on a mask so I don't inhale all of this contamination on the floor, basically. It's just, it's so bad. I'm sweeping, I'm sweeping. It's not really doing that great of a job because the stuff is flying everywhere. So I said to Ron, he wants to go to bed. He's tired. He's drunk. He needs to sleep it off. He's going to go to bed. So I'm telling him, I said, listen, well, you know, cause I'm thinking to myself, well, he's not going to really be able to sleep very well because I'm going to vacuum this floor. But I told him what I told him was, I said, listen, I'm going to sweep your floor. I said, but after I sweep your floor, then I have to also, um, vacuum. He was like, oh, okay. You know, but he's drunk. So he's not whatever. I noticed on the floor that there's a brand new pair of tennis shoes on the floor. And I say to myself, wow, these are just like Justin's shoes. And these are these Nike, the Nike shoes. Um, there's a, but his Justin's shoes are actually like basketball type shoes. But the shoes that Ron had brand new shoes were running shoes. And the soles of the bottom of the shoes were in perfect condition. Um, except there was a scuff on the shoe. The, the shoes were scuffed up. Okay, they were brand new shoes, but they were scuffed up. And I saw the box. The box was slap torn up. I mean, like nobody, like if you're trying to keep your shoes in great condition, you put them in the box. Okay, that's where you store your shoes are in the box. But his box was torn to pieces. So he couldn't even, um, not, he wasn't even wearing the shoes to begin with. He wasn't even using the shoes. They was there brand new, but yet they had scuffed up. So they were not being properly taken care of and the box was all torn up. And, um, let me say, make sure I think that was about it with the dream. Oh, and I said something about the air conditioner. I said, well, you're gonna have to turn the air conditioner on here. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I even, I reached over to turn his, he had like a window air conditioning unit. And I said, well, we have to turn on this air conditioner cause it, like, it's going to get hot in here. So we got to turn this air conditioner up. We got to turn the air conditioner on cause it's going to get hot in here. Okay. So, um, and that air conditioner, that's basically because he, he, uh, the judgment that's about to come, it's going to get real hot. It's going to get real hot. All right. So let me just go through some things. Let's go to the, here's the interpretation. And here is the Bible scripture that goes with this. The waxing of the candle. Okay. So to pass from one state to another, to become as waxing strong or to wax warm or cold to wax feeble to wax hot to wax old to wax worse and worse and as we all saw with what i saw in my dream um the candle was standing up okay it was standing up straight but what happened this is what happened to it it waxed old. It wasn't strong anymore. Okay. And then I had to cut it. There became two, which stands for the double portion of judgment that is coming. All right. So, all right, let's see. Now I'm going to go to, I was read, I was led to some Bible scriptures, Proverbs chapter 15. Verses three and four says the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Now, mind you, this is all about spiritual condition. Okay. And, um, when you're out here attacking brothers and sisters in Christ and, uh, twisting things around and um, filled up with pride and stuff like that. Uh, it's perverseness of your tongue. I'm going to read to you Isaiah chapter 28 verses 3 to 13. 
the fading glory of those proud leaders, because see, um, Ron, you seem to believe that the Lord has anointed you and called you to be a leader in the church. That's what you've kept touting, you know, yourself as on your channel, that you're a leader of the church and everything like this. But, um, okay, I'm going to point to you what the Lord sees. The fading glory of those proud leaders will disappear like the first figs of the season, picked and eaten as soon as they are ripe. A day is coming when the Lord Almighty will be like a glorious crown of flowers for his people who survive. He will give a sense of justice to those who serve as judges and courage to those who defend the city gates from attack. Even the prophets and the priests are so drunk that they stagger. They have drunk so much wine and liquor that they stumble in confusion. The prophets are too drunk to understand the visions that God sends and the priests are too drunk to deceive to decide the cases that are brought to them. The tables where they sit are all covered with vomit and not a clean spot is left. They complain about me. They say, who does that man think he is teaching? Um, let's see. Let's see, uh, I'm trying to get to my... Okay, they complain about me. They say, who does that man think he's teaching? Who needs his message? It's only good for babies that have just stopped nursing. He is trying to teach us letter by letter, line by line, lesson by lesson. If you won't listen to me, then God will use foreigners speaking some strange sounding language to teach you a lesson. He offered rest and comfort to all of you, but you refuse to listen to him. That is why the Lord is going to teach you letter by letter, line by line, lesson by lesson. Then you will stumble with every step you take. You will be wounded, trapped, and taken prisoner. Um, this is about what's going to happen to those who are caught up in mystery Babylon. I'm going to also read to you, and as you can see, the priest uh, is basically the teacher, and he has been called, Ron, you have said that God has called you to be a teacher, a pastor, uh, this kind of thing. And um, in the dream, you're drunk, you are staggering. And I'm telling you, you need to get right with God. And it's something that you need to do very quickly. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This is all spiritual matters. This is not you really going out drinking alcohol. This is all about being spiritually drunk. And we are all to be, we are to be sober-minded. And... Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 says that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish your shoes in the dream they had blemishes on them they had blemishes on them they were not without spot or wrinkle or any such thing now I'm going to read to you let's see uh Hold on, let's see. Let me go to Philippians chapter 3 verse 14 says, I press on to teach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. So you need to run your race. You need to press on. You need to run the race. How God is saying you're not running your race because your running shoes, they were not worn. They were scuffed up, they, but they were not worn. The, the bottom of the shoes weren't even dirty. They weren't even worn, but the sides of the shoes were scuffed up and your box was torn in pieces. Galatians chapter 5 verse 7 to 9 says, You were running a good race. Okay? You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? You were running a good race, Ron. Your candle wick was standing up tall. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. So, it even says that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. God calls you to run your race. God calls you to, to stand tall, to be righteous. Okay? Okay? And whatever calling that you feel that you have on your life right now, whatever's going on, 
is not being sent by God, the things that you're doing, okay? And you know exactly what it is you're doing, how you've gone and you have attacked brothers and sisters and just tried to destroy them uh, on your YouTube channel over and over and over again. You're very much filled with pride and arrogance. But these are the warnings for you because God loves you. And also, let me go to, let's see, Ephesians. I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15 says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So your shoes represent this Bible, this Bible scripture, the gospel of peace. But when you're cutting down your brothers and sisters and butchering them on your channel and thinking that you're being, you're doing it as God's will, you think God's called you to do this thing. God's showing you you have not and that you are not wearing the shoes and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You do not bring peace. You bring hatred and division and pride and arrogance. Um, so, you know, God sees you as not running your race. Uh, you have neglected running the race because your shoes were brand new. The box was torn up. You have the ability to run the race, but you choose not to. Uh, you choose to teach what um, you're listening to. Not you're not you're not listening to what God's trying to tell you. OK, you're you're working and you're speaking out of your own mind, your own vain imagination. Um, you know, brand new shoes, they were unworn, but they're scuffed up. Now, shoes like Justin, it's referring to his name. His name means just upright or righteous. Okay. And going back to the candle, the, the candle wick. Let me just show that again. The candle wick was upright. It was upright, but... Then it, then it collapsed into the candle. Can't burn anymore. So it was cut. It's cut in two. So, which brings us to this Bible scripture here. Revelation chapter 18, verses 23, 24. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Okay. This is talking about spiritual Babylon, mystery Babylon. But this is talking about in a spiritual sense is what the Lord's sending me to. And I'm going to tell you have, you know, the blood of the, of God's prophets and of his saints are on your hands because what you have done to them on your channel, the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, your candle wick, it collapsed, it got weak, it fell down and it cannot shine. The light of a candle shine, the, the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. Okay? The voice of the bridegroom of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. And this last part was so important. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Okay? All of chapter 18 is a great uh, if you were to read it with spiritual eyes and see it as a uh, it's absolutely a physical entity. Babylon, but it's also spiritual, a spiritual immorality, a spiritual corruption that is going on uh, here, unfortunately. Now, you know, this dream is showing that you're not going to receive like a double portion of a false spirit, but you're going to receive a double portion of judgment. You were told in the dream to get right with God. I know I knew you had better do it now, not later. Do it before it's too late. I knew you were in big trouble with God, but let me just assure you, you will be humbled. You will be humbled, which is also, that's what this is. 
You will. You were standing upright, but now you're going to be humbled. You're going to bow down. You will be humbled. Okay. Cut. And a double portion of judgment is coming to you. You have an opportunity to repent now. You have an opportunity right now to get right with the Lord. Um, ask God to forgive you because he will forgive you. I'm not going to go into a whole lot more here. I'm just going to keep it like that. Um, but I will tag you in this video. I was never uh, told to before, but now I'm, I'm going to tag this video. Make sure you see it. And just for my brothers and sisters Christ, let me tell you something. If you go to his channel and you start to follow behind his teachings and his arrogance and his pride, um, you know, there are some things that he has uh, that sound very sound, okay? But all it takes is a little leaven, just a small allowed, a, amount of leaven to ruin the whole batch. And this is what's happening. This is what's happening. So, um... I pray that all of you have a blessed day. God bless you, your family, and your animals on this day. And Ron, the Lord loves you, and you need to repent. You need to get right with God. Goodbye.